What's going on, guys? It's me again, and I just want to do a uh, a showcasing of my Nintendo 64 collection because these past couple of days I've been finding myself uh, collecting for this system along with many others. And while my collection may not be as extensive as most people's, or at least some, that is, I do feel as if it's big enough to just showcase. And I may just end up making an update video sometime in the future if I get any more. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to go from left to right. Okay. First game on my collection is Hybrid Heaven, which I picked up at a Comic-Con. And uh, so far, this one is a pretty good game. There aren't very many role-playing games, but this one is pretty unique. And, and there really weren't very many uh, role-playing games released for the system, as we all know. But this one is actually a very unique uh, role-playing game in its uh, combat system and how it plays. Didn't get too deep into it, but I'd recommend it if you want something different for a change. And this one is a childhood classic. It's, of course, a staple, Banjo-Kazooie. That one really doesn't need any introduction along with some others. And uh, here's Star Wars Battle for Naboo. And here's Star Soldier. And this one, this one didn't sell very well. Pro probably one of the most underrated games on the system, in my opinion. I don't understand why it sold so poorly, but you know, maybe there's a story behind it, but I personally don't think it's a bad game. And the next one is another decent role-playing game. Actually, a very good one, I might add. Ogre Battle 64, which I, too, picked this one up at Comic-Con. And it's kind of a shame there weren't very many of these on the system, but it was capable of doing it, but only in its own right. But anyway, I'd recommend this one to anybody. That one's pretty, pretty good, at least from what I played of it. And another underrated one, Body Harvest. Didn't get too deep into it, but this one's also really good. And I got uh, Quake 2. Very good. That's one genre that the Nintendo 64 did just absolutely phenomenal, a uh, phenomenal job on, so... Of course, you don't need me to say to say anything about that. Here's Quest 64, one of the more infamous role-playing games on the system. I don't think this one is a terrible game, and it's far from the worst I've played, but there definitely are better, uh, better games out there. And I got Hexen. This one's all right, but not really one of my favorites. And... Uh, these two, since they're both together, coincidentally, uh, these don't need any introduction. GoldenEye 007 and Perfect Dark, both of which, as we all know, were done by Rareware, and that equaled one thing and one thing only, quality. Both of them are great. And I'll pass over this one since these two are together. I got Battle Tanks and Battle Tanks Global Assault, both of these. This one in particular was a personal favorite of mine. Never got a chance to play the sequel as a kid, but that one is, I think, better than the first one. Too bad that's been a, uh, a dormant franchise. Anyway, I'll get to this one later. Here's Jet Force Gemini. Never played this one as a kid, but this one is also a really good game. And two, done by Rareware. Quality. Anyway, here's Arrow Fighters Assault. This one is... This one's alright, but... Like I said, better games you could be playing. And that and... Well, I guess... I don't think there are very many uh, flight simulators on the uh, Nintendo 64. I've already showed you one of them, about to get to another one, but anyway. Actually, maybe two more if you want to count uh, one I'm about to get to, but 
like I said, Ace Combat, this one really doesn't hold a candle to the Ace Combat franchise that was already on the PlayStation at the time. So, anyway, like I said, better games out there, not terrible, but, well, it does have its own problems. Anyway, Castlevania 64, pretty decent from what I played of it. And got Donkey Kong 64, which is, in my opinion, a very good 3D platformer. Although, although, well, this was probably around the time. Well, I'm not really going to get into that, but but overall, I, I I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this game quite a bit. Though I could never beat the Donkey Kong Arcade. That was just even to this day, I can't even beat it. It's just well. Very, very difficult, anyway. Super Mario 64, this needs no introduction. Almost everybody had that on their system, or I'll rephrase that, everybody had this. This was like a staple for the N64. Anyway, I got Get 64, which is, this one, the game itself is not bad. It's it's fun, but you know, it's, uh, but you know, it's, it's not the best of ports. But other than that, this one too is a uh, a staple. Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask, classic. Mission Impossible. Uh, it's an okay game. I'll put it to you that way. Although as a kid, it, I don't know why, but for some reason, as a kid, it did remind me of Goldeneye. Even though I never I never read the reviews that were posted on it at the time, but. Apparently, a lot of reviewers, from what I read, when I researched this game, did compare this to GoldenEye, even though they're both completely different games. The, uh, the one difference is uh, the biggest contrasting difference between the two is that this is more of a third-person shooter, and GoldenEye, as we all know, is a first-person shooter. The one thing they have in common, actually the two things they have in common, are that they're uh, spy espionage games, and they're both based on, on a uh, movie license. So, although I think one did it better than the other. So, I'll get to this one later. Actually, no, wait, I'm going to get to this one right now since I already did the first one. Uh, the sequel, Banjo-Tooie, another childhood favorite of mine. And in my opinion, I think this one's a little bit better than the first. So... I even got an underrated gem right here, Shadow Man. Don't have the sequel to this one, just got uh, got the first game, but from what I played this one, this one's really good so far. And another childhood favorite of mine, Doom 64. Uh, not a direct port from what I heard of the original Doom, but uh, but it's a very good uh, it's a very good take on the franchise. Although I'm kind of disappointed it didn't have a jump feature on it. And that was actually a major complaint by many. But overall, I think it's a great game. And like I said, this is one genre that the N64 did just super well on. Just first-person shooters in general. That and 3D platformers and adventure games. And another childhood favorite, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. To me, that's a great game too. Very diverse and just very fun to play. And this one is also another staple that needs no introduction. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Let's face it, we've all played this one along with the previous one. We all know about it. You don't need me to tell you how great it is. And another childhood favorite, Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Great game. That and I'm a big Star Wars fan. And now I'll get to this one. I'll cover these in one fell swoop. Uh, Turok, Dinosaur Hunter, and Turok 2, Seeds of Evil. Both of these are great, although I, although for special reasons, I actually like the sequel better than the first. Reason being is because I think there's just so many things that the sequel improved upon that the first one, while it did great for what it had to work with at the time, and it was a very solid PC port, uh, the sequel, I thought, just improved on everything. 
that and it also had a better storyline to it. Actually, it had much more storyline to it, uh, unlike the first one. But still, the first one's great, don't get me wrong, but the sequel, in my opinion, is pretty much the cream of the crop. Anyway, another childhood favorite, Star Fox 64. This too, fantastic game. And I've also got uh, Blast Core. This too is also really great. Done by Rareware. Equal one thing, like I said, quality. And anyways, also got to uh, pick this one up here recently. Actually, this was fairly recently. The most recent one was uh, Battle Tanks Global Assault, but uh, got this one at uh, Second Hand Charles, which used to be Books A Million, Goemon's Great Adventure, and this too was a really good game. I do not have the first one, but I do have that on uh, set in my sights. And this too I got at another Comic-Con, Resident Evil 2. This one is also a a very, very phenomenal port. And considering how the Nintendo 64's controller was designed, I, I always kind of wondered to myself when I when I first heard about this one, you know, how how they were going to pull it off with how the controller was made and how how everything was set up, and lo and behold, it just controls well. I mean, it's just the it this is just an ideal port for the Nintendo 64. So, anyways, I just don't, I don't understand how they were able to, that I'm going to say something that may be kind of cliche, but I don't understand what they used to uh, port what was already on the PlayStation at the time to this cartridge, but, but overall, it's, it's just amazing how, how they were able to do it, but kind of like what they say, where there's a will, there's a way. Anyway. That's all of my uh, Nintendo 64 collection, and like I said, I may end up doing a uh, update video on this. So those are all 33 of my games, and I just kind of felt like it was probably enough, or I just made this good enough to showcase. But I'll try to make an update video once I pick up more that are in my collection, like Turok 3, and maybe even Rage Wars if I can find it. But Anyway, I think that's about all I've got, so thanks for watching.